I'm now that person in the future with a penis that I imagined. And I'm such a happy, content bloke, you know, just to, I'm just a normal bloke. And that's all I ever wanted to be. Just completely content in myself going about my life. Just forgetting that I'm trans. Forgetting that my penis is other, is anything other than my penis, you know. I don't get my penis out to pee and think, oh, there's my phalloplasty. <laughs> I don't get my penis out to enjoy myself and think, oh, there's my phalloplasty. I just go about my day enjoying myself, having a pee, having a shower, and I don't think about it. And that was where I wanted to be. Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back, lovely people. Thank you so much for choosing to spend time with me today. It's lovely to see you. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, then a massive welcome and thank you for choosing one of my videos. So today is a gender transition catch up. Uh, it's a massive celebration milestone video today because today I want to celebrate the fact that it's a double milestone actually. It's nine years now since I had the very first stage of my phalloplasty surgery. So August last month, because I'm always a little bit behind the times here, August actually saw two massive milestones because phalloplasty, which is lower surgery to create a penis, actually takes part place in a number of stages, usually three stages over here in the UK, but sometimes you have other surgeries done along the way, but it's generally three stages. So it takes a number of years. So I have my first stage done, got it written on my hand because you know me and my brain fog. My first stage was done on the 23rd of August, 2015. So that's nine years since stage one. And my final stage was done on the 8th of August, 2018. So two massive milestones. So that's nine years from stage one and six years from the final stage. So do massive milestones to celebrate today. So in today's video, I haven't really got a topic or anything that I want to discuss other than to celebrate this massive milestone. Nine years. Nine years. I can't believe it's nine years really since I had my penis created. <laughs> That's just incredible really. So yeah, today I just want to share this milestone really because I think it's really important to just keep talking about it. <laughs> Not be just because I like talking about my penis, which I do, clearly. Um, because it's so important, because also all too often what happens, and this is historically what's happened, is it's so hard to get information about lower surgeries, whether that's phalloplasty or metoidioplasty, because when people are happy with their results, they just disappear. You know, they might share for a while and they disappear. And then what often happens is you hear the negative stuff and then that's what people think, that it's negative and that's it. So I made a decision that I will just keep sharing because it's important to see really positive results and to see really positive results down the line as well. Especially from somebody that's older, I'm 50, and to see how, you know, I share this about my top surgery, how top surgery ages. And I think it's important to see how a penis ages. I'm not going to show it, don't panic. Although you can see it. It aired on Channel 4 a couple of years ago. I'll put a link up if you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, to hear how, you know, I go on in life with a penis. As I'm, I travel life as a trans man, just blending into life with a penis and how that is. So yeah, that's what today is about. But you, if you do have questions that I haven't answered in previous videos and you want me to talk about, it's likely that I'm gonna make another video about the erectile device. So do pop some questions below if you have any questions. So what can I say, really, that I haven't said already? I am so very happy with my penis. You know, I did this thing before I had stage one. I mean, you all know, if you followed my journey, how much difficulty I had making this decision, whether to go ahead for surgery, because it's no easy decision to have surgery. 
And to have such a complex multi-stage surgery like phalloplasty is incredibly hard to put yourself through years of surgery and something that you can't guarantee the outcome, you know, whether how much sensation you're going to have, how successful standing to pee is going to going to be, you know, all these different complex things that go on with lower surgery and like, can I risk it? You know, what, there's just not enough information out there, first hand accounts, all of these things that factor into it. It's so hard. And I was trying to kind of do these exercises of like imagining myself in the future with a penis, imagining myself in the future without a penis and talking to these two versions of myself and imagining how those two versions would feel. And I did some of this in drama therapy that I was doing at the time. And I'm now that person in the future with a penis that I imagined. And I'm such a happy, content bloke you know just to I'm just a normal bloke and that's all I ever wanted to be just completely content in myself going about my life just forgetting that I'm trans forgetting that my penis is other is anything other than my penis you know I don't get my penis out to pee and think oh there's my phalloplasty <laughs> I don't get my penis out to enjoy myself and think oh there's my phalloplasty I just go about my day enjoying myself, having a pee, having a shower, and I don't think about it. And that was where I wanted to be, you know, because that's the difference. Before gender transition, every day was thinking about my gender, thinking about being uncomfortable, having a shower, being uncomfortable, trying to have pleasure in my body, feeling uncomfortable, trying to go to the toilet, feeling uncomfortable trying to have intimate relationships with other people, feeling uncomfortable. Just trying to go about my life and interacting with other people and feeling uncomfortable. And now none of that happens, you know. When it comes to my gender, none of that happens. I don't have to think about it. And that is because of gender transition and because of having this surgery. And it's wonderful. That is really, really wonderful. My penis looks as fantastic as it did the day it was created, it's got better because, of course, at stage one, all that's created is a simple penis. It doesn't have a glands. You can't stand to pee. It's floppy because there's no erectile device. So it just gets better and better en route. From the time it was completed with the erectile device, the glands and all of that, it's aged well. It functions well. Everything is just, just wonderful. You know, and people say to me, well, Finn, you've had this perfect result. Of course, you're going to be happy. My result is not perfect, you know, and I want to stress this because I think people think that I rave about my lower surgery because I've had some perfect results. Now, if you go through my videos, you'll see that I actually do not rave about my lower surgery. I give a very, very, very balanced account of the highs and lows of this. I talk very openly about all of the complications I had and how that was difficult and how they were fixed. You know, I give a very, very open account in my book about how this was very difficult on me mentally, but why I did it and how it's I've come out the other side. I never ever say that this was easy. I'm very honest. But what I do very well, because I've learned to, is I manage my expectations. So when I talk about being incredibly pleased with my sensation, the aesthetics and all of that, it's because I've managed my expectations. I didn't expect to come out of this surgery with a penis that I could go onto some porn site with and be, look, this is the perfect penis. I didn't expect to come out of this surgery with a penis that had the same feelings as it would have done had I been born with it because I have sensation but it's displaced and I know that of course it doesn't feel the same way as it would do if I'd been born with this penis. A phalloplasty penis, the sensation of a phalloplasty penis is always going to be different but what's key is I can orgasm with it, I can feel sensation with it and pleasure with it and that's fine. That's what works, you know. 
and it looks good. I have, I'm, I self-harmed. So I have those self-harmed scars on my penis and around my glands. So it's not perfect. One of my testicles is too high. So my, my um, scrotum is not at all perfect. But none of these are me saying I'm not happy with my penis. These are me saying this is my penis and I'm happy enough with it because every single man's penis, they will look at and go, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that. And that makes me just like every other man. And that's what I wanted to be, just like every other man. Because most men's penises are not perfect. And most men have got something that they are embarrassed about when it comes to sex and intimacy that they have to work with because that's just what being human is, you know? And part of being trans is accepting that we can only get close to being cisgender. We can't ever be cisgender. And if we think we can, we are kidding ourselves, you know, because we are not cisgender, nor will we ever be. You know, phalloplasty can get a very close result to a penis that we can be happy with, and we have to do the rest of the work in coming to accept that our penises are good enough. And this includes the rest of our surgeries as well, our top surgeries and everything. We will have scars. Our bodies will work differently. And if we can't come to a place of acceptance about that, we will always be unhappy. And I knew that, and I had to do that work on myself. So that's why I always sound really happy and everything. It's not because I've had this gift of this amazing penis that has 100% full sensation like a cisgender penis. You know, it's, it's that I've done the work on myself to get to that place of acceptance with it, you know. And I know lots of other people that have got similar sensation to me. I've got, I know lots of other people that have got similar aesthetic results to me. My results are not unusual. Lots of people have these good results. It's just unfortunately and understandably, not a lot of people want to share about phalloplasty because it's so intimate. So unfortunately, people that share tend to be people that are angry about what's happened to them. And so they share. So you often see the bad results. You don't hear the good results. You know, it's important to see both sides of these stories because when it comes to surgery, to make an informed decision, we need to know what can happen on both sides and then we can make an informed decision about what we want to do. <clears throat> you know, and let's not forget that these surgeries, phalloplasty, metoidioplasty, and all of these things, scrotoplasty, are not just for trans people. Cisgender people have these as well. You know, these weren't just invented for us. They they they've been there for cisgender people as well. And they are complicated surgeries and they are not without um, complications. But these complications can be fixed. And these surgeries are improving every single day. Um, and as we sp as I, we stand here in the UK, things are improving with more surgeries taking place and another team's now here in, in London, which is good and things are improving. And it's more accessible by people, which is amazing how things have improved since... I first had my surgery, which I'm pleased to see. But yeah, this video today was just me saying, you know, and reminding folks out there that um, I'm still here and I'm still sharing because I think it's really important to, to say that, um, you know, um, people age with these surgeries and remain happy with these surgeries. And absolutely, these surgeries make a change for the difference for people's lives and they have for mine. I will likely do a video about the erectile device and how that's traveling. Spoiler alert, it, it's still fine at the moment. I still have occasional issues with the button not working and I have to kind of like have a bit of a tweak with it and kick it into action, but it's fine. I might do a video about that specifically. I'm not sure, um, possibly. But if you have any specific questions that I haven't answered, please do pop them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer that. Yes. I created this t-shirt myself. You can find it in my shop. I'll put a link up to that and here as well. I think the one thing that remains to say that people always ask is about, do I have any regrets? I think you can possibly tell from this video, I have zero regrets whatsoever. 
the complications happened, they got fixed. It's fine. No regrets whatsoever. People often ask about my chronic illness and whether I regret surgery because of that. I've addressed this many times. My chronic illness was not caused by my surgery. I'm not even going to spend time going into that now, but I will link you to another video. Always forget what side, but where I explain about that in depth. But yes, happy nine years with a penis. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a bit of a rant today, wasn't it? A celebratory happy rant, but yeah. Thanks for watching, folks. Much love from me and my happy penis and um, a very sleepy pup. Mm. Much love to you folks. Have a great rest of week and weekend. I'll see you next week. Mm.